What's up everyone, Elliot here from Entree Educator with another video to help educators make that next step and become successful entrepreneurs. I'm here today with Aja, who goes by the handle of Everything Aja. We're gonna be talking about growing um, a business through YouTube and you know promoting digital products. And we're gonna talk about all about how she's doing it right now. Aja, can you introduce yourself and tell us how you got started? Hello, my name is Aja and I am a educator, of course. Um, I pretty much for, like have done pre-K through fifth grade, primarily early childhood, but I am certified for middle grades. Um, the last five years, I've actually been full-time as a curriculum specialist, so I was all over all teaching and learning from pre-K through fifth grade, um, and through that, that pretty much made me very knowledgeable with math, reading, all best practices. In 2019, I started having the feeling like I just wanted more. And um, my boss was started becoming a toxic work environment around there. And instead of just like moving to another school, I kind of had the feeling of starting something of my own. It's something that I always kept saying I wanted to do eventually. Like when I have time, I'm going to do that. Um, so I just uploaded my first YouTube video September 29th, 2009. I mean, 2019, I'm sorry, September 29th, 2019. Um, and really the kind of like the reasoning behind when I became, when I was a teacher, it's so easy to play the blame game and say, well, you know, it's the parents' fault. These kids don't um, have the at-home learning environment. The parents, like you're always blaming the parents. When I became an administrator, and our school is very hands-on with um, all stakeholders, so you have parents coming in there all the time asking me curriculum questions, I started hearing things from the parent perspective. And I realized it wasn't that parents just didn't want to do things, they just didn't know how. So it's like that whole will versus skill. And so that kind of was the driving factor behind my why. And then I became a mom. Currently, my daughter is three. And when I became a mom, things that I just naturally did as an educator with her, other parents just kept asking me, well, how did you get her to talk? She was talking full sentences and she was only one and a half. So I'm like, oh, well, you supposed, you know, and I was just always giving tips. And all of that kind of happened around the same time. And I was like, there's a need for this. There is a need for the combination of parents and teachers just to have a common language because I was so tired of seeing the blame game. So my first video was how to get your toddler to talk. And that came from a parent at my daughter's school asking me about her talking. Then my next video was about guided reading. <laughs> and then that came from work. So like all my first videos were all about you know, different things in education from both perspective, being a mom and being a teacher. Um, when I started, actually, my targeted audience on YouTube were parents. Like I wanted to create a hub um, for parents to get that same knowledge that teachers had. But the way it evolved is was totally different. So started off, you know, it was, it was new. Um, I never got any growth for my first six months. I mean, I hit 100 subs within three months. So I hit 100 subs on my birthday in December. Nice. And then from there, I did not get, a, it, felt, it felt like I did not get a subscriber. I might've only gotten five till like April. So it was really slow. I was doing parent-teacher conferences, very slow. Um, and then in April, as we all know, that's when the pandemic hit. And right around then, I was like, clearly parents don't care about education. Little did I know <laughs> what was about to happen. Right. Um, and so then I just started doing different things. I did because I was really good at games. I just uploaded a random um, Easter video. And that I, I remember sitting in my room and I was like, what is going on? Because my phone was just going off with all these notifications and people were subscribing. I was like, I was getting more subscribers in a day than I had the last six months. And so then I was like, ooh, my, maybe, people, maybe people like fun stuff. I did a Zoom game video. And to this day, that was that is my top played video. Um, so I just randomly did a Zoom games video. And that took off. And so then from there, I was like, well, this is an education channel. <laughs> I just started uploading stuff. 
So then I kind of started a two day, like a two day a week where I was doing education and fun stuff for families. So it was like, you get the education, you get the fun stuff. So I did that. And that's really where my channel kind of took off and started growing. Um, and then like last fall, I reached the point, it was just too much. Like I was trying, I realized I was trying to please everybody and it was just overwhelming. Then I found out that my audience was not, so I changed up my view. Sorry, before I go there, I changed up my, like the content and then started doing fun educational content. So I kind of put the two together mm-hmm. because the fun stuff was growing and my educational content was, I mean, not even getting 10 views mm-hmm. versus I could load a, a game video and it would get a few thousand. So then I just started doing fun educational games. And then, which is all me, like my entire classroom was nothing but games. I mean, we were playing games in the hallways, like every (laughs) aspect was a game. So it was really just right up my alley to do educational games. Um, And so then little did I know my entire audience then changed on YouTube and then became all teachers. Okay. Because that's naturally who wanted educational games. Right. So then it was like, okay, but I still wanted parents, you know? So now it has like evolved to parents and teachers, but majority of my audience are all teachers. So it's like 75% teachers, 25% parents. Um, But it's just nice to have that hub going Mm -hmm. back to the why I even started a YouTube channel in the first place of at least just trying to close a little bit of a gap in education that I can you know, that I can kind of help. Um, so although I want to kind of start off with more like, you know, teaching curriculum, because that's what I'm really good at. It is really transformed to something else I'm good at, which is all the fun educational things that make education fun. So, nice. So that's kind uh, of my YouTube journey. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I'm wondering, it sounds like later in the journey, you began uploading more videos. You said two a week. And at the beginning, when you weren't seeing that much progress after the first 100 subscribers, did you have a schedule? Were you doing one a week? Were you doing it kind of whenever you wanted? What was going on at that point? I was doing once a week. I didn't start the two a week really until the games kicked off because that's when I was like, well, how do I do this? So I did two a week so I could do education one day and games the other day. Right. I found it really just I'm so interested how you mentioned like the skyrocketing effect of your YouTube that you've recently experienced. Why don't you share with the listeners about those numbers? You went from 100 and then what was like the next milestone? And then why don't you tell people where you're at today and how long, I know that you said you've started in 2019. Why don't you tell us like how long that's been and whether it's two or three years now. Um, okay. But yeah, the numbers really speak for themselves. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm always interested in other people's journey. So um, I will say I was researching before I uploaded my first video and I used to do, like I used to love videos before. So I did come to the platform already knowing how to edit because I taught myself how to edit. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's that kind of attributed to some of the growth because I already knew a lot of the learning curves when it comes to technology that other people are just trying to figure out. Right. Um, so yeah, so it took me a long time, <laughs> as, I, as y'all heard, to go from 100 to 200. But then I went from 200 in April when that first video started kicking off. I reached 500 in June of 2020. So that memory actually just came up the other day. That summer of 2020, I went from 500 subs the beginning of June to 1,000 on June 17th. No, June 14th. I got monetized on YouTube June 17th. And when you get monetized, that means that you have 4,000 watch hours plus the 1,000 subscribers. Okay. So for me, it actually happened simultaneously. In fact, YouTube was broken. I was so mad. YouTube was broken right when I hit it. So I um, hit it. How was it broken? It, what do you mean by that? So there's like a lot of days where um, like YouTube, it'll have like bugs and then it'll like put it, push out like a, we're trying to fix these dates. Okay. Have you ever seen those? You know what I'm talking about? 
No, I ha I haven't gotten one of those yet. Oh, well, okay. So there'll be days where, you know, technology things happen. Sure. Um, I guess the bugs will happen on YouTube. So they have to try to calculate it on the back end. Well, this is what happened right when it was time for me to get monetized. So it was like the data wasn't there. And I knew when I hit the watch hours, because I only had about one, like I literally probably only needed what, 40 hours. And I was getting about a hundred hours a day last summer. I mean, everybody was just stuck in their house looking for fun things to do. So I knew I hit it. It went literally from the 14th to the 17th until they fixed the bug. And then it was like, oh, welcome to the YouTube partner program. <laughs> so um, I got into the YouTube partner program the 17th. So that was the first official day that I was able to get paid on YouTube. Um, from then, I was getting about 50 subscribers a day. That's um, when I hit that YouTube momentum. And I was literally getting about a thousand subscribers a month. So, um, and I actually document it. So I would definitely tell you guys, if you do YouTube, document your growth because it's hard in the moment. But when you can look back like, oh, I used to calculate how long it took me to get 50 subs. Now I only calculate how long it takes me to get 500. Okay. So like kind of what your benchmarks are, you're going to continue to increase, which is good. That means you're growing. And so like last December, December of 2020, I was about at 8,000. So come January, I completely shifted my focus because I was still trying to please. Now it seemed like everybody. And so I wanted to change because I knew I wanted to do more. I knew I wanted to go to courses. And I knew I wanted to, and with courses, I was like, okay, what course do I want to start first? And then I need to align my content to kind of go hand in hand with the course, right? That's what I was thinking. So the majority of my parents were preschool parents, although the majority of my teachers were from all types of grade levels. So I was started doing a lot of preschool videos. Well, that actually kind of hurt my channel mm. because like I said, majority of my channel were parents. But now I'm just going, I mean, majority of my channel are teachers, but now I'm kind of catering to the parents. Okay. So it did, like my numbers stopped. So I went, so I went from 8,000 last December. I did not hit 10,000 subscribers until May. So it took me um like five months to get to the next 2,000. But in that five months, I switched up my content to just pre-K. I slowed down my speed. So I went down to one video a week. Mm -hmm. because I then started picking up consulting um, okay. as another stream of income within my business. So then I started consulting parents. So because that was taking up more time, I'm still working full time. <laughs> you know, I'm still right. a full time administrator. Um, so my nights, and, my nights and weekends were now being spent talking to parents versus doing YouTube videos. And then in March, I did catch COVID-19. So then I was I was out for a whole month. And so it really kind of slowed down my YouTube momentum. So now I have completely shifted back to my, my fun games. So now I see it picking back up again. Um, so now I'm like literally back into where I was, which is like the K-5 fun teacher, fun game, educational games aspects, um, because that's literally where my majority of my audience are. So I really want to listen to them because a lot of the comments are like, but the games, we want the game. <laughs> okay, so listen to the comments. Right, De definitely listen to what people are wanting because really with YouTube, what will happen is if you're not putting out content that your subscribers are watching, it won't push out that content to other people. Right. Because in YouTube's mind, if, you're, if your current audience doesn't want to watch it, then nobody else is going to want to watch it. Sure. So, um, so I have changed and now I see my numbers increasing back again because I'm listening to my audience, <laughs> which are awesome. You mentioned doing courses and I know that you're selling digital products. Why don't you introduce some of the types of products that you've made so far? Okay. So because I have did the games, the biggest thing I do is on-screen games. Okay. So I have like different on-screen games for like, for example, my addition on-screen game is my top seller. 
So, um, and all my digital products align with my YouTube video. So I use YouTube to streamline my products. So in a video, you'll see a game, link down below in the description. People go to the description, there goes a sale. So mm -hmm. I use YouTube to kind of um, gear. Yeah. So my on screen games, um, I also have digital, I have pretty much all digital products, but a lot of printables. So like I have an entire pre-K learning bundle like preschool, pre-K, um, kindergarten age that has all the letters. I mean, all these different activities. Um, another thing that people like, and I offer it two ways. So it's learning boards and learning binders. So they can either download the, download and make it on the, by themselves, or you can mm -hmm. get me to make a learning board, a learning binder too. Right. So that's the only physical product that I offer are the learning boards and learning binders. Um, Eventually, I want to be able to upload it on Etsy, but I had to wait until I can handle adding something else to the plate. Okay, but so let's, let, let's talk about, I was just going to ask, why don't you share the places that you're uploading it to where people actually purchase it? Okay, so all my products are kind of housed on Weebly.com, um, and that's because it is a free resource, and I already use Weebly for my classroom mm -hmm. and as an administrator, so I was used to that platform. So it, was, it wasn't a learning curve. Um, and the good thing about Weebly is they actually have an online store. So if someone's starting out with digital products and don't have a lot of money to put up front, that's a free avenue that's already built in. Right. Um, so they had the online store. So I started off with Weebly. Um, when I decided that I eventually wanted to move to courses, I started Kajabi in January. And the reason I, I try to look at long-term goals because I knew I wanted to eventually go to courses and because I knew my addition, the addition beat the buzzer game was going so well, mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to offer a bundle. So I did addition, subtraction and addition and subtraction as mm -hmm. a bundle. Well, in order to do that, I needed a lead page. So I went on like lead pages and it costs like $80 a month for a lead page. And I was like, if I'm gonna pay $80 a month, then I might as well get what I really want to scale my business later on and do Kajabi. Right. So I started up Kajabi, but the way that Kajabi works, it does not have a store platform, like a way to do like a cart. Mm. You can buy products, but it doesn't really have a cart. You have to then buy Instacart. Well, as a small business owner, you know, you have to, I'm gonna teach you how to cut. <laughs> so I did, I do my website and everything on Kajabi. And then when you click store, then it takes you to my Weebly. Okay. Um, I do sell all my products also on Teachers Pay Teachers. Mm -hmm. I actually started off when I told y'all I made my first product and I made like 25 cents. I started that off Teachers Pay Teachers. I started on Teachers Pay Teachers. But the thing with Teachers Pay Teachers is they take like 45%, uh, you know, from yeah. the profit. So you don't really see that. And when you're selling digital products, they're already so cheap. Yep. So I... I just played around with it when my um, boards were going so well and I put them on Weebly and Teachers Pay Teachers and I was making 90% on my own site yep. or 45% on Teachers Pay Teachers. It, it was like a no brainer. Right. And you can have that link in your YouTube channel to your Weebly site where you make a larger pot of the profit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got so it. that's how I do my digital products. Okay. But then it's still on Teachers Pay Teachers for teachers to still find the products and purchase sure so yeah. I'm, i do make like about 90 dollars a month off teachers pay teachers and i do not promote okay my channel. Uh, you know right. that account it just it's just on there right aja you mentioned the word on-screen product or uh was that what the, was it on-screen on -screen game? games what does that mean you mean like online or what is on-screen game okay that's a good question pretty much like on on the screen literally so um, like it's literally just an MP4, like a video. Okay. It's a video that you click play. Teachers like it because you don't have to do anything else. I right. I say the directions. I pretty much walk the kids through the entire game. So you just hit play and then you just facilitate your class, basically. Okay. Um, but it's really good you can do it if you're online or face to face. Yeah. So if you're face to face, you put it on Promethean board. If you're online, then you just screen share and play the video. 
cool. That sounds really interesting. Okay, so now I'm getting a better understanding of what it is. And can you tell us more about that best-selling product that you have? So it's a video, and then do you give activities after the children watch the video too? Is that how it works? Um, not quite, but that's a great idea, actually. <laughs> there we go. Great idea. Um, so now it's just the games. So awesome. they are addition games and subtraction games in the bestseller one. Um, so to have a question, the kids have a certain amount of time to figure out the answer. So there's like different ways that they can do it. If it's online, I say you can use a chat box. If it's face to face, you can use a dry erase board or simply yell out, yell out the answer. Yep. So I get three different ways the teacher can say, okay, y'all, we're going to do this way, yep. you know, and um, it's, goes, it's 11 rounds. So it's 11 rounds that get harder and harder and harder mm -hmm. because the time, um, the time gets shorter and shorter. So it really works with fluency and math fluency because that is a big thing I've seen that kids really struggle with. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that's like what I'm, I love fluency, math and reading. So the object of the game for the kids is to make it all the way to the end of the, the, end of the game, plus beating the buzzer. Cause there's a big yep. buzzer that goes off at the end. But they try to have to make it through all the rounds. Well, the thing is, if you miss two of the questions in a round, then you're out. Okay. So that's kind of how it's a game. So that, that's why I said there is like a, um, the teacher does have to kind of facilitate it. Right. But it's fun because you can also play it solo. So a lot of parents like it because yep. they can have their child try to beat their high score. Got it. Okay. Okay. Now I, I, I I think I get it. That's really cool. I'm looking at your website right now, the Weebly one, which is for anyone who wants to check it out, it's everythingaja.com. And it's branded so well. I'm wondering, like, did you do this? Did you pay someone to do this? How'd you get this up and running? It looks great. <laughs> I actually did that all by myself. So I'm actually in the middle of re redoing it. It'll be everythingaja.com but I have grown a lot since then. So we're actually switching over this weekend. Okay. Um, but it's going to be the same, you know, everything Aja.com, but I have learned more about the online space, but yeah, that was actually my original one. And I just, I get self-taught myself yeah. that, like I said, I had um, a website when I was a teacher and also had a website when as an administrator so right. that all my teachers can kind of get on there and get what they need. That's really cool. So you've been picking at tech with education for a while now. Correct. Correct. Uh, you mentioned that you already had the skills to edit. Can you tell us what uh, software you're using to edit your videos? I use iMovie on my MacBook. Yep. Okay. So back in college, I used to do like a lot of videos. <laughs> And um, I, just, I had to kind of self-teach myself, you can say. But I just started on Movie Maker that was on um, Windows. And then, believe it or not, when I um, stopped teaching fifth grade, I became an instructional technology teacher because I integrated technology so well in my classroom. So when I became an instructional technology teacher, I taught kids how to do like iMovie, uh, Movie Maker, how to use Scratch Junior and code. So I'm kind of have been in that space, but all self-taught <laughs> um, awesome. because of the videos I was, you know, just kind of playing around with in college because you have extra time. Sure. And my extra time was spent learning how to edit. And, That's you know, really I guess cool. it paid off later on in life. Right. Uh, you know, I have another question um, of all the products that you do make from the things that you put on to TPT and Weebly, your own site. Are you making those? Have you tried to outsource them to anyone else? Um, how's your product um, yeah, making process going? Mm, I currently do everything. Okay. And I have heard a lot of gurus say to outsource. I just am nervous because my name is on it like, I don't know. So currently I do everything. I do know eventually I may have to start um, outsourcing. I'm actually in the process of doing a year's worth of on-screen games. Like that's what I've been spending my entire summer to do. So for back to school, teachers can literally buy their entire year's worth of standards-based on-screen games. Um, but I'm doing all of the work. Okay, got it. So, and, um, so you're yeah. using iMovie for editing, you have Weebly and Kajabi to host your online platforms. And then how about your um, like thumbnails? What are you building the thumbnails with? 
Canva, canva.com. Yep. And I actually have the um, paid version, but educators get the paid version for free. Do we so, need like a certain school website mm -hmm. uh, or email address to get it? Yes. And it does take like a few weeks for them to get back to okay. you. Oh, that's um, good to know. But yes. So then you have access to like all the graphics. Cool. Um, Aja, let's talk a little bit about the monetary aspect. For example, I've heard other people say that Kajabi is pretty expensive. And, um, and I think you mentioned that Weebly, is it free? And I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about what you're paying. And then also, I know that I want to grow a YouTube channel. And I know that there are people in the Entree Educator group who would also like to grow a YouTube channel. Um, what can someone expect with that type of like 500 subs to 1,000 subs, to even like 15,000, which is basically what you have now? Um, and if you're willing to just, you know, share the journey to the listeners it would be great. Okay. Um, so I first want to address the, what you're talking about with money. For me, I listen to a lot of big people say, go ahead and diversify your income. And so that's why I even started digital products. And I can attest to that, that has been, um, the moneymaker for me. So okay. I don't do a lot of brand deals or any of that. I just focus on products. I don't do a lot of affiliates. I just started one affiliate with Crowd Party, who do like on um, on screen games, and they're pretty cheap. So I do have a code like Aja twenty one, and you get fifteen percent off. Um, and I said yes to them because they were so similar to the games that I was already doing. So yep. I was like, okay, this is something my audience would like, and you could do it in the classroom. It works very similar to Kahoot. You know how Kahoot works, where all the yep. kids get the code. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. Okay. Um, so that's really the only affiliate I use, but products are really my main money booster. Um, and I can give you an example of recently, you know, I told you my views kind of went down. Mm -hmm. um, it became one of my lowest months. I made less than $200 on YouTube. Okay. But because of my digital products, it did not dip at all. Okay. So um, my digital products literally are kind of what keeps my business afloat right. as a digital product. So that's why I'm always trying to like make more and stuff. Um, for as far as the monetization part, the most I've ever made was $600. Okay. And that's about December when I had 8,000 um, subs. Yep. And also advertisers always pay more in December because mm. of the holidays right. so that that's a normal thing to experience yeah. um, but then i've had low months where i only made a little over a hundred okay. so one thing i can say about the youtube journey as far as monetization it is going to fluctuate like it's not the same at all and um you if you look at other people on youtube everybody gets paid differently and it all just depends yeah so definitely have other ways to get paid whether it's a membership site whether it's you know teachers pay teachers whatever it is um for me i've had my success in creating my own digital products and that kind of is what you know keeps me going um but definitely have other you know other avenues i also have my own t-shirts like this is one of mine oh um, so cool uh, where, can we, merchandise. where can um, we check out your merch Unplugged um, on my YouTube channel or my website. There's a link that says merchandise. Um, my Instagram is also everything underscore Aja. There's a link on there. Um, so I have, and I actually coming up with some cool back to school, back to school merch. So I did summer merch like unplug, mute the mic. <laughs> and there's another one that says my mic is muted for the summer. Oh, like, that's, that's really cool. I like that. <laughs> yes. So really kind of playing on the whole online humor because that was the two things that, I mean, I was tired of doing. Because I've been doing, I've been doing, although I'm an administrator, I've been doing small groups all year online. So I've been doing a lot of the online students, ESOL and fifth graders um, to kind of help out. Yeah. And I mean, your kids are, mics are muting. You're like, hello, are you there? <laughs> so I've been going through that. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing you can expect is the whole up and down. Yeah. Um, I actually get just as many questions about you, my journey on YouTube mm -hmm. as I get with education. Okay. So one thing that I'm doing is I'm actually starting and prepping for a second YouTube channel 
that only talks about growing, it's growing a YouTube channel and digital products. So it's all about teaching pretty much people in their side hustle season, what we've all been going through while we're still working full time, but um, preparing people to really start a business in that side hustle season. Mm -hmm. um, so that YouTube channel is actually going to be called Aja, A-J-A McNair, M-C-N-A-I-R. But I'll have a link on my regular channel. Um, but I'm dropping my first video on the same day I reached a thousand subscribers. So July 14th, I'll release my first video on that channel. That's um, awesome. You can oh. definitely follow me on there, and I'll be literally yeah. be walking people through how to start a YouTube channel and do it for a business. Because a lot of people do it for a hobby, and then you waste a lot of time trying to figure things out. Yep. Um, I think one reason I look at people that have been on there for seven years and still don't have the success that I've been able to have, but I started it with a business mindset in mind from the beginning. Mm. So I was doing digital products when I didn't have anybody following me. So then it was easy because when people started following me, they're seeing my old videos and then there goes sales. So I kind of built it up for a business from the beginning. That sounds really cool. Okay, so treat your platforms like a business and don't rely necessarily on YouTube ads because having links, whether that's your own products or an affiliate product can really balance out and even increase your sales and kind of give you that own like security so that monetization isn't reliant on Google ads. Um, Aja, is there anything else that you would like to mention or um you know for motivation or inspiration or education to the other educators who would like to grow their own brands like you have yes um i definitely want to say stay connected to your why like if you know of course we all have personal whys like okay i want to you know get my dream home or i want to be a six-figure entrepreneur those are great but if you stay connected to your why and who you're actually helping you'll that I mean, that's literally what will drive you through the, the, the down times. Cause there are times where you you'll get frustrated that's in life. So don't get discouraged when you see those moments and just kind of stick with your why. Um, one tip I can give that I always tell my clients, I always tell my clients to keep a win journal. So like for me, like I said, I was marking every 50 subscribers and now every 500 subscribers, but some kind of win journal that will help you along the way so when you do have those discouraging moments, <laughs> you do have those discouraging moments you can look back and say okay okay this and that that just sigh of relief to keep to keep going um so don't get discouraged keep your win journal and most importantly subscribe to my youtube channel <laughs> Everyone, I will definitely link Aja's YouTube channel in the description below. And um, Aja, thank you so much for coming on to the channel. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much for this interview. I've enjoyed it. All right. And I look forward to seeing your growth. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate the time. And um, yeah, come on to the Entre Educator group if you already haven't. And uh, let's keep chatting, okay? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, Aja.